Right, it's another glorious day. I'm down at Conway Golf Club. I'm going to be testing a golf club that is, uh, it's a strong lofted iron. And we've seen plenty of those over the last couple of years. But I think this is a strong lofted iron with a difference. It's from Honma. That's Justin Rose's brand that he's tied up with in, uh, in recent months. And I'll put this through the test. I'm going to tell you why I think this strong lofted iron is a bit different and could be a bit of a game changer. Yeah, I am back down at Conway Golf Club and this is absolutely, what a great day to be filming and testing these TW747 irons from Honma. Now they've brought a couple of sets of irons out in recent months. Two are forged, this one is a cast club. First question I'll ask is how many of you have heard of Honma before the deal they'd signed with Justin Rose in recent months. I know from my perspective, uh, I'd only ever associated Honma with a very expensive high-end uh, product and that's the only uh, knowledge I had of them previously. And this is still an expensive set of clubs that they've brought out. And we'll talk about the cost very, very shortly. But it's made in Japan. It's all about quality of craftsmanship. Uh, they really are suggesting they've built a top-end product here. And the price point, although very expensive, is lower than what they've put out there before. Let's talk about the price. Uh, 969 for six irons is a kind of general market price that I'm finding for these. So it's, that's £160 for, uh, per iron. So it's still very much top end, it's still very much expensive and what I want to find out today is what do you get for your money? Is that quality of craftsmanship going to make you a better golfer? Is that £160 going to help you score better when you're out there on the course, when you're using these TW747 irons? There's only one way to find that out, get this camera moved, get hitting some golf balls and let me give you my opinion on these Hummer irons. I don't know if you picked that one up in the uh, in the skyline, but I, uh, it basically started off down the left and it stayed that way. Um, what I'm noticing already with these is there's a very strong ball flight um, relative to loft again. Don't forget these are stronger lofted as we're going to keep saying throughout the video, but uh, it's a very strong ball flight. And for something like that, played a five iron off this tee. Um, I think we're into a slight headwind, only a slight headwind, but again, that's not affected at all. Um, the feel out of them, again, is something that I'm going to mention quite a bit through this video, I think, and in a positive way. That's the interesting shot for me and, and the interesting thing full stop about uh, these so-called strong lofted game improvement irons. Uh, so I played the uh, number 10 which is effectively a pitching wedge. Um, this is downwind um, into very firm greens here at Conway and no issue with stopping a ball whatsoever. So the, the, this myth about uh, loft and low spin, I've still not seen it out on greens even in mid-July on a firm links track but again that's a different video and a message that no one seems to uh, want to listen to. Anyway, uh, just on the feel again, the big deal with these irons is that um, they have a, a very solid feel about them. Uh, I mentioned in the actual build of this club and how it's put together now, it looks in appearance, it looks high quality, it looks solid and that's the feeling you get when you strike a ball um, and they've done a tremendous job in terms of the sound and feel. I've mentioned this um, on the PXG clubs that I've got in the bag at the moment in terms of uh, how they've achieved in a cast club some unbelievable feel. Well, they've done that in these Honmer irons as well. I mentioned it with the uh, sort of long wedge shots and the iron shots so far and uh, a bit of short gain there and uh, on each of those three shots once again plenty of feedback from club head into hands if that's the kind of thing that you like if you if you uh, if you've got a thing about feel which I know certainly I have 
these are very responsive you certainly get plenty of feedback uh, back into those hands it's got um, perhaps I'll play some more shots there's a slight spring in the face it does seem as though it's sort of firing out there so that might be something that you'd uh, you'd get used to um, and like I said I'll play a few more shots before I confirm that but it certainly feels like it sort of pops off that face quite lively but for them three shots again superb in terms of the I've said it before like I said on those cast clubs to, to achieve this kind of feel is uh, is a real major positive and perhaps a massive step forward in terms of what we're going to expect from cast clubs moving forward because uh, that's a real change from the cast clubs of old I'm just looking at yardage there, it's uh, leaked out slightly left to right, uh, but this yardage is playing 175 and again I think that'll go pin high, this pin is right on her back tier and what a great par 3 it is. Uh, but this is a 7 iron, 28 and a half degrees aloft and that's always your barometer for where these go, so yes they're strong lofted, but again the big thing I talk about in every video is, is loft relative to ball flight and I don't think it is because again, or launch at least, because if you've seen the ball flight on that, it's the loft may be the loft of a 5-iron in traditional terms, but that's not the ball flight of a traditional 5-iron. And that's the major difference for me. So they've got plenty of tungsten weighting in the bottom uh, of these irons, which again will help um, with forgiveness. It'll help um, that CG location and give us the assistance, the forgiveness, all the positive things that we need. But then it's counterbalanced by the stronger loft, which otherwise I think this ball would be literally going up into orbit. So. The loft issue again, for those of you who are, who are critical of the stronger lofted um, and moving away from tradition, I think in a lot of instances, and this in particular again, it just counterbalances what's packed in uh, in terms of that tungsten weighting or whatever, whatever system a club manufacturer might use uh, to make the game or the club a little bit easier to use in terms of forgiveness and launch. But again, 175 carry. Good ball flight, good descent angle, that ball is stopping, it isn't going anywhere in terms of landing on greens. That's the, that's the big difference with these, and again go back to what I said earlier on the video, is about the difference, what they've done with these things in terms of, yes they're a strong lofted power bat I've suggested in the title, but they've got plenty of playability, workability. I managed to just uh, punch that one a little bit low and you can do all of that. This is without doubt a player's club with a lot packed into it in terms of health. right to the flag but it's middle of the green and uh, we have hit a lot of long irons and talked about the long irons uh, but down the short end uh, of the bag and I've got this uh, like I said number 10 this pitching wedge I I've hit some shots around the green it's got some great feel and the ability like I said to, uh, to flight the ball differently with the wedge as well in terms of uh, knocking it down a little bit it gives you that versatility in this uh, sort of head profile I believe uh, but also that full shot in again it's very very sweet very very sweet is the only way I can describe it and again gives so much feel and maybe in the long runs you're not looking for it but certainly down this end of the game those scoring irons then that's a massive tick in the box uh, on these irons okay so let's quickly just uh, jump in and do the dry ball data thing and I said this on a video that I did earlier on this uh, week actually that's a big thing for me uh, big learning curve really and I did it last year is the more you get on course with products the more you get a better understanding of how they perform out there in real conditions which sounds an obvious statement to make but even like sound and feel it changes so much outside of that sort of enclosed environment that you find yourself in a driving range but anyway and again so far in a more positive manner so again the feel and sound out of these things has been superb um other things to notice like i said uh, let's get the dry ball data up that i did collect 
it's pretty obvious stuff to be fair I mean again we're not learning anything new here it's strong lofted uh, it's going a long way in terms of a 7 iron you can hit these things for miles if you really decided to give one a bit of a whack um, but that's not the purpose of this video uh, the spin is low and again it's something that I always achieve in terms of what I see on indoor dry ball data I don't really see that translated out there on the course and again I've referenced it already on some of the shots that have hit in but the big deal for me is what they've done with this product is they've managed to make it in they say a medium sized profile for me I would say it's more compact than that it's certainly what you'd term a player's iron in terms of how it looks sat behind the ball it's again it's got a very very thin top line um, thin relatively thin sole and again overall profile from sort of heel to toe to me seems compact but I'm saying this in a very positive way because this is going to appeal to players who like I said have always in the past been driven away from what you class game improvement irons and like I said I'm not one for using these phrases but that's the only way to really understand and categorize in a terminology that we're all sort of get very quickly so for me a club that's got strong lofted plenty of forgiveness goes a long way plenty of uh, helping getting the ball airborne that's the kind of things that I would suggest of game improvement irons but they've packed that into a very small profile so for me that's where it's a big move forward in a way it's similar to what um, I've seen in just a couple of irons so far this year and I think it's going to be a trend moving forward I think that you'll see the sort of game improvement characteristics packed into smaller profiles like this and they've done it in an extremely good way again looks is a personal thing I, I like it I'd prefer if they didn't have the black insert in the back and it was an all chrome finish if I'm being perfectly honest there's this sort of slight carbon imprint in it I think it slightly cheapens it if anything because the rest of the club the finish on it is absolutely superb it's a tough one to knock and it's it's difficult to knock product right now as we have done for the last 18 months most stuff that gets brought to market is good in one way or another and they're aimed at certain golfers and, and one club will appeal to another and vice versa but in this like I said I think what they've done and why it's so different why it's such an interesting product is without repeating myself is this ability to have packed in what they've been done into a small profile it's an extremely playable iron it's a player's iron still it's going to appeal to a big cross-section of people the big one is the price and at 160 quid an iron on a brand for me that still needs to do a lot in terms of marketing to get its profile certainly in the European market anyway into a position uh, where it can sort of charge those kind of prices uh, that I think is going to be the tough sell for Honda I might be wrong and again comments down below um, is that going to be an issue for them? 160 quid is an issue anyway full stop to trying to sell to uh, to a mass market but that coupled with the Honma brand which for me hasn't got that familiarity that uh, a lot of people might be comfortable with is an issue but the product is absolutely grade A seriously if you get a chance go out and try it that's me done no more to say I'm going to carry on playing these holes it's too nice to go home